in the heart of Atlanta where we just saw Michael Kovnick's new film about Colonel Bruce Hampton, one of the legendary musicians from the late 60s, one of the progenitors of the jam band movement that includes Fish and uh, Widespread Panic, so many other bands, of course The Grateful Dead, Zappa. Uh, the new film is called Basically Frightened, and it got a great reaction uh, from the crowd tonight. It's about 100 minutes long. It's culled from about 300 hours of footage, and we're going to take ha take some time to talk with its one of its directors, Michael, in just a minute. Thanks so much for sitting down and talking with me. I, I know you're I know you're really busy right now, but tell me what it was like uh, uh, going through this. How long was the process to uh, make uh, uh, basically frightened? Um, it took a long time. I think uh, well, we started editing in 2006. So, uh, but it, it ran out of money several times along the way, and uh, for a long time it was stuck, and I didn't know I, if it was ever going to be finished. Yeah. It took a little bit of, uh, it took a, I think almost three years of Bruce and I dealing with lawyers and getting everybody in agreement so that we could actually finish it and have control over the film. Now I know Tom. I know Tom Lawson actually actually initiated the project. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of work, a lot of interviews, shot a lot of footage. But were you were you as big? I mean, I assume he was a huge fan of of Bruce's. But were you just as big of a fan? You know, or, or was this kind of a process of discovery for you as well? It's it's interesting because I've been aware of Bruce for a long time, and I knew a lot of people who knew him, and I knew a lot of music who really respected him, but I was always kind of like, I don't know about this guy, like I just didn't get it, or I didn't, you know, and through this process of working on the film, I've become a huge fan, and um, have a ton of respect, I mean, he's, he's amazing, and it's really been a fun process of discovery, and, um, you know, work with him a lot. So, yeah, it's been good. Yeah. So now, uh, now, what you, what are your plans to do with the movie? Are you, are you uh, going to seek theatrical release, or are you going to just go for, uh, go for home see. video and television and things like that? I think probably theatrical release only on, in a film festival circuit would yeah. be the most likely thing theatrically. We'll do some one-off shows probably in a lot of cities. Bruce has a lot of fans. Um, so I think we'll probably do some good screenings in different places, but there's a couple different people who are interested in either having it online as a pay-per-view or and we're also interested in you know, going through the traditional channels like Netflix and I, iTunes or whatever. Um, it, it, it's anything can happen at this point, but uh, we're, we're hoping that there's some way we can make a little bit of money you know, coming in for the film as opposed to money just going out. Well, I really think you'll actually do really well at like things like the Horde Festival and things sure. like that, so we're selling copies of it there. And yeah, we're thinking that it could be that independent distribution is, is good because Bruce is in with all the jam bands and they've all got huge mailing lists, they've all got a lot of fans. And they're all in the movie. <laughs> So, it's, a, it's in a pretty good position, and that's why we're sort of going to at least throw it out there to a few different distribution companies to see if anybody wants exclusive rights, but you, know, you just never know on that. But, uh, like, I also want to ask you, what are your impressions of what uh, Bruce thinks of the movie? I mean, is he, is he sort of shy about people knowing? Does he, does, is, it, is there part of Bruce that actually prefers to be under the radar, or uh, is there a part of him that's kind of afraid that this might, Maybe. might raise him up a little too high? <laughs> well, know? I think he's had enough ups and downs that he's, he's ready for another up right now, so that's good. Um, he's interesting. 
keeps his cards close to the vest. It's taken me a long time to get to know him. And what I really tried to do was to get him coming through on the screen in a way that is hard to, to get through because he has a lot of uh, has a lot of personalities, he has a lot of different facets, he's always Yeah, and I feel like spending enough time, finally started to get it. Yeah. And uh, I got a huge compliment from uh, Flournoy Holmes, who said, you totally captured the series in this film. And there's like nothing better to be said. Now, you know that I, you know, uh, I, I, you know, a long time ago, I saw a cut of the movie, uh, a little bit before you actually got involved with the movie. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I really like what you personally brought to the movie, the graphics and everything. I mean, it looks like a completely, not a completely different movie, but uh, but but you yeah. but you, you spiced it up quite a bit. Yeah, we uh, where where it needed spicing up. I mean, Thanks, how could yeah. you how could you have someone tell that UFO story without actually illustrating it? That was the problem. They had all these great stories that are great, but it's just him talking. You have to edit. So what? What are you gonna cut to if he's talking about UFOs? I mean, like, it's just. And so, a uh, good friend of mine, Joe Peary, did the graphics and animation on that. He drew the characters. He's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, if you've seen any good rock and roll films, they all have a little bit of animation or something. And a lot of documentaries as well. Yeah. felt like there was enough of it all the way through. That was the hard part. But we finally got the formula and started to get it, get it figured out. So. Now last question. Uh, do you feel like do you feel like there's a possibility with the release of your documentary that uh, that there might be a resurgence of, of interest in Bruce's music uh, to the point where maybe maybe even like somebody would uh, shell out somebody out there would shell out to create a box set of some of the stuff that oh, yeah. has never been you I know, mean where is music to eat? You know? Actually Bruce owns the rights. <laughs> and um, and music to eat just to let viewers know was Bruce's first first record which was uh, legendary for being one of the lowest selling records in, in Columbia Records history. So. Yeah. yeah, but it's also one of the greatest records ever made. I've heard it and it's it's brilliant. A dual record set, it's, it's incredible. I love that album. But so, yeah, I think that there's, I think there's a, I think Bruce is going to become a lot more known from this film. And uh, the word's getting around. People are excited about it, and I feel like uh, he really he deserves to be known and to have a legacy out there. I mean, if you try to buy his albums right now, the only place you can find them is on eBay. Like, <laughs> and they're like a hundred dollars. You can't find new copies. Right. So yeah, I think that um, something big hopefully will happen. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the movie. I, I think it's wonderful, and uh, I want to have you on Movie Diction House to talk about it. Uh, so we'll talk Maybe about it'll that be quieter later. then. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be a little bit quieter. You know, we're we're there's uh, there's a lot of tequila flowing in the room right now. So, <laughs> so thanks a lot, and uh, let's go and take a look right now. I've always been blown away by the Colonel. I definitely think he's the father of whatever quote unquote jam band or alternative scene there is. Uh, he's just a musical genius. He may well be the Vincent Van Gogh of rock and roll music. The eye of the hurricane, the distressed calm, is Bruce Hampton. Bruce is the eighth wonder of the world. 
our jaws were dropped just watching. It was definitely the most far out thing I'd ever seen. I was always sort of a little bit afraid of it. I may still be. A basic limb fright of moral turpitude. I'm scared of politicians who have no hobbies. He's a mess, man. I love him. Ho ho! He is a chart topper troubadour like myself. It was like meeting some kind of elder statesman. It was like meeting the leader of a country. Bruce has a knack for finding the best players around. He gives musicians a lot of freedom, and I, and I think that's why so many great musicians came out of his band, because they were able to get a voice. He's kind of like a guru to a lot of people. Before I met Bruce, I, I almost gave up music a couple of times. I definitely wouldn't be where I am today musically or career-wise if it wasn't for the Colonel. We started taking lessons from them. I think he impacts our life every day and in every way. I don't see an end to the impact. He taught me about leaving your ego at the door and just bringing your heart in to play music. Never take yourself serious. That's so silly. Take what you do serious. And there's nothing more disgusting than seeing a serious musician. If I had never met Bruce, I'd probably be more of an egotistical jerk and a hell of a lot less of a musician than I am now. We all feel like we're his kids or we're his family. He's a musical father figure for sure. Yeah, more like a crazed uncle, actually, you know. <laughs> Somebody you're a little scared of. <laughs> Carol Bruce Hampton. Be sure to check out Dean on his Facebook page, on his blog, Filmic Ability, and on Blog Talk Radio, Movie Geeks United, which you can listen to at any time on the internet or listen to them live weekly.